I noticed that my most popular videos, I think like my top five videos that I have recorded and posted on this particular channel, my top five videos, or maybe the top six or seven even, are spoken word videos. So when I speak, I seem to be getting more views than when I post music. My last video is getting about 120 views in a couple of days, which is pretty good. But to be completely honest, my views have fallen off quite a lot since I started. I, for a month, I put shorts on my channel. So for one month, I had three shorts playing every day, plus my normal song on Friday. And it boosted my channel. So playing shorts did boost things in the short term. So I got some more subscribers. I got some more clicks on my shorts. But that didn't translate really into more people coming and listening to the full songs on my channel because the shorts are about 30 seconds, some as short as 19 seconds long. And if someone can listen to a 19 second long portion of your song, that doesn't mean they listen to your song. So what you wanted initially, what I wanted initially, was that the person would get a taste of the instrumental and then want to listen to the full track on the channel but it didn't really work that way. So when I stopped doing shorts, because I was just tired of doing really little tiny clips, and I was, was posting normal songs again, so for the last couple of months I've been posting, I think Monday and Friday, a different track, full songs, but the response has been pretty terrible. And I'm not blaming anyone for it. It's definitely not the quality of the music, because I think it's just as good as, if not better than what came before. It's more a matter of the algorithm is ignoring me at the moment. So I'm going to do my own thing. So I'm going to speak on this video. And what I'm going to speak about is something very special and, and dear to me and close to my heart. I found, I don't know if you see this, 2001 Beats. This is some hip hop I was making and I recorded it onto mini disc in the year 2001 the year of our lord 2001 22 years ago i made some of these mini discs and i just found them yesterday in the garage in a box that hadn't been opened since i'd moved i moved from hungary okay so i moved from australia visual i moved from australia I moved to Budapest, Hungary, visual, seven years. And then I moved to Austria for eight years, visual, somewhere. I hope there are visuals happening. I moved to then Ireland, and only in Ireland did I comprehend or realize I had this disc because I thought I'd lost all of this music. And to be completely honest, it may be terrible. It may be really bad because it was 22 years ago. I would have been recording with a, a drum machine, maybe a 303 or a MC505 from Roland. We'll look at the other discs. Two track October Beats, 1999. 24 years old, 1999. Wow. Two track also means that it's not multi, so it means that they're mix downs. So if it says two track on here, it means I've got mix downs of my music from 24 years ago, and I'm going to extract the music from these discs and put them onto the PC. I will listen to them with you, and I hope that you'll enjoy them, or at least have a laugh at my sake. What I would like to do is if they are any good, Chop, chop, something different. All right, so if these are any good, these 2001 hip hop beats, if they're any good, I'm going to produce them and release them. I'll probably put fresh beats on top. I don't know yet. And if anything is good on this two track, it could have drum and bass, or it could have hip hop, I'm not sure. It's 1999, so it was 24 years ago. I'm very curious to hear what these songs sound like, plus, I would love to put some, maybe some fresh kick and snare on there and re-release 
some of these old tracks. But to be completely honest, this was before I knew anything about music. Chord progressions, there might only be two chords in a song. So it might be down, up, down, up, down. I can't tell you what's on these discs. All right, there's something different. Blank. Uh, I also noticed when I opened this box a little earlier, these are so old that the plastic itself has started to break up and split. Luckily, I think this is a blank one. But what I'm going to do is use just a dot of super glue, maybe on the corners, so it stays away from the disc. And I think we can recover whatever is on here, even if it's got a split in the case. But these two discs, I'm going to do my next video. I'm going to have these two discs played, or you'll hear some tracks from it, because I also found this. I mean, it means nothing to anyone except me. <laughs> Drum and bass from the late 90s, early 2000s. Mine. It's called Impact Bass Loud Like Bands. I came up with this name. I think it was the George Hotel in Brisbane. I was playing a gig alongside, I don't remember their name now, but they had a really good drummer who was very loud. And I realized that when I had to play my set after that drummer, my beats sounded very soft in comparison to having a physical live drummer in the room. And that's also why when I did play live drum and bass, check this out, people in Brisbane, impact bass, more bass is something people would be yelling out of the gigs. That's where I got the, the name more bass. But anyway, impact bass, loud like bombs, is what I would call an album. I colored it in for some reason. But it's an album <laughs> of drum and bass that I made. This is amazing. Local impact bass, another disc of drum and bass. It even says more bass. Ha! More bass. I guess 22, 23 years ago, we were yelling more bass at these drum and bass gigs. So when people were playing, our favorite friends were DJing, we would be yelling out more bass or drop the bass. Whenever there was a breakdown, I would be one of the people who yells out, bring back, bring that beat back. And, and then the breakdown goes down and I would yell, bring that beat back just before the drop. And then when it drops, yeah, that was fun. All right, two discs, ha. Huh. Two discs of what I used to do live drum and bass. The drummer is not recorded. I have my own synth drums on here. When I played live, I played with the synth drums. I used a drum machine, mixing desk, and a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard, to operate the sampler. And I had a live drummer, which was a big draw. When you're a DJ and you have a live drummer, people come to see the drummer which is a great tip when you're playing live. You can make the beats at home without a drummer, but when you're playing out and about in the real world with people on the dance floor, get the tightest drummer you can find. And no joke, heavy metal drummers are pretty good drum and bass drummers because they already are used to playing high tempo. And high tempo, let's say drum and bass, is somewhere between 140 to 180 which is probably what this silly shit here is. <laughs> I was doing my tracks 175 to 180 beats a minute, which is a bit too fast for people who are not taking chemical grade stimulants. But that was back in the day. I'm gonna do one video about these two discs and we got dusty. I also found, I discovered here, Shop Chop. I used to work in a record store called Butter Beats in Brisbane. I do believe that record store still exists, Butter Beats. I'm sure Jason is still there. How's it going, mate? Shop Chop is all, when I took all these drum and bass 12 inch singles while I was working there and I just recorded them all onto mini disc. I took my mini disc player to work and recorded everything. 
<laughs> but that's not my music. That's like white labels and other drum and bass albums that were out at the time. All quality music, at least the shop chops from Butter Beats. If you're looking for vinyl, look no further than Butter Beats. I'm not being paid to do that. I don't even live in Australia anymore. Damn. But let this be a lesson. Let this be a lesson. Uh, if you put your, I hope these work, god damn. If you put your instrumentals onto a hard disc of some kind, be that an ADAT tape, highly recommended. ADAT, at, the, at this juncture I had mini discs to record to. Some people may say that it's a lower sample rate, so it's inferior. But if I can recover these hip hop beats from 2001 and whatever this other music is, I don't know if it's reggae or something, from 1999, it will have been worth it. This will be special. And the thing that's going to make it special. Ah, oh, damn it. I literally bought this so that I could do like a Lahane style public broadcast out my window onto the street and it's a mini disc recorder so I bought from the Yapan there's even a picture of a kitten you see that <laughs> Japanese writing and such this is from Japan this is brand new and it is supposed to be in mint condition so I'm opening this up for the first time in our next recording you will actually hear the music because I have to set this thing up I don't want to bore you with that we're already 15 minutes in keeping these mini discs was always an afterthought it was never something I consciously did the mini discs themselves really had no importance to me whatsoever and certainly I didn't think of them seriously as an audio source to make music from but on the other hand, I don't have any other access to my old songs. I don't have old hard drives. I don't have old computers. That shit is all gone. I mean, I've moved to a few different countries and I've lost a lot of gear. Sorry, JJ. I lost those master tapes from Scrum Feeder in Budapest. True story. <laughs> Having hard copies of people's master material and it's true i had the hard disks of scrum feeder jj speedball gave them to me to master i took them away i went to hungary with these things i left australia with his hard disks i'm talking tapes adat tapes eight track recordings and um when i left budapest they were left behind i don't know how it happened to tell you the truth i lost them somewhere along the way I moved twice when I was in Budapest, but anyway, oh, I just realized I'm going to have to blur my address when I show you the package. Remind me to blur the address. It's the kind of thing I always forget to do. Unless you want to send me cool stuff, you can do that. <laughs> it's not worth getting swatted or something over. It's been a long time. I used to work at 4 Triple Z radio station in Brisbane, the longest running FM radio station in Queensland and it was a volunteer organization where people got to work there and learn about radio the book in japanese okay it's uh, immaculately packed can i show you all, all right immaculately packed it's japanese yep i want to see this thing. uh the remote i wonder how long this thing has been in storage or did they pack it did they pack it just when the order came? It's hard to hold a camera and a knife. Let this be a lesson to get a one hand knife. One hand knife has a little knob here so you can open and close it just with your thumb. <laughs> I'm not selling knives but I do advocate for one handed knives for this reason. Look at how hard it is to do everything. I am holding the camera and trying to do an unboxing damn it just come out 
I do have ADHD. That may affect the quality of this recording. All right, we have a nice looking remote. And what to check for with a remote is very simple. Dust. Of course you're looking for wear. If you can see wear, then dust is gonna be a secondary issue. Wear is the first thing, because if someone presses a button 10 million times, it might not work. In fact, it looks brand new. Check it out. No dust. No buttons getting worn off. The Everything looks new. You can't see any wear from fingerprints. Or, you know, those sort of rings that start to form after a while. When you just press the same buttons again and again. Thank God all these things are in English. Because if that stuff was in Japanese, I'd be buggered. There's another menu, as you can see here, there's a, another menu next to the numbers, which basically means that there's probably like a step down thing somewhere, program probably, and then you can use the secondary keys. That's all pretty straightforward, record, or whatever, it's like a CD player. The main thing is the quality. Of course, this is the other thing you always want to check with. If the batteries inside have leaked, because it is a common problem with old gear, the batteries that they use could leak because they've been left in there for 20 years. Thankfully, I think you can see that pretty clear. I don't know if there's ever been batteries in here. Maybe that's just me being presumptuous, but it's in extremely good condition. Yep, extremely good condition. Let you see my Yoda cup. Unboxing you will, or whatever. <laughs> huh? This is this crap one-handed thing again. The packaging is immaculate. This is the kind of packaging you want when you buy second-hand gear. Not just yesterday's newspapers and some old garbage bags. Oops. <laughs> Alright. Damn it, this guy packaged it like a motherfucker. And cling film. All right, it's got the Japanese writing. Joyful Honda. All right, but definitely came from Japan. Even the box is from Japan. All right, let me just unbox this thing. They wrapped it up like it's a salad. It's always better to find where the end of it is and unwrap it. This damn thing. It is immaculate. Immaculate. Slight amount of dust. There we go. So we know genuinely it sat somewhere, but we don't really have any other distinguishing marks that show it's been in any use. It could have just been sitting somewhere, but otherwise this thing is in excellent condition. Mini disc recorder from like 1994 or something. It really it shows the time that they were very popular, and this would have been one of the best, at least on a domestic scale. Of course, there are professional ones. You'll know the difference because they have the ears, so they can be strapped up to a 12-inch rack. Otherwise, this is a domestic, but high quality, high end mini disc recorder. I'm really looking forward. So making some use out of these bad boys and putting them onto digital format with the PC. I wonder, can I do one of those Eternity Mirror thingies? Eternity Mirror. I'll have to turn that light off. Eternity Mirror! Woo! Woo! All right, that's what happens when you, that's what happens when you film the monitor. You can make an eternity mirror. That's a cheap trick. All right, I'll just film my outro, let you know what's going to happen with all of this stuff. The only thing I don't like, and I think it's pretty honest, the only thing I don't like is this bloody thing. Look at this crap. I don't like American plugs. I don't like American power. 
110 watts, not 220 to 240. 110 means that it has an American plug. And if I put an adapter on this now, if I put an adapter on an American plug on a machine that takes 110 and plug it in Ireland, it will explode. I have done this in Budapest, not on purpose. Someone gave me an amplifier CD player combo from the USA. It had these things on it. I replaced these with European plugs, thinking it was the same thing, and poof, explosion, not fire, but smoke and noise and panic when this stuff kicks off. I don't like using American power rated things in Europe, but this is something special. What do you do then? What happens if you buy a very special piece of equipment from the USA and it's 110 watts? Or is it volts? I always mix them up. You have to buy a power converter. It's called a step down converter. It converts the power from being up high, 220 to 240 volts, down. I better be getting the volts right because if it's watts, I'm going to sound stupid then. But anyway, from 220 down to 110. 220 is Europe, Australia, and basically the whole continent of Europe as far as I understand it. 110, as far as I know, the only country I know who uses 110 is America. And I don't know whether that's true to say that the Canadians use 110 and that people in Mexico use 110 and people in Argentina or Chile. <laughs> I don't know whether all of America uses 110 power. I do not know that. But I do know that when you buy a machine that is specifically made for the American market, it will be 110. This also leads me to think that maybe Japan has 110. But I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Could someone please leave a comment down below, does Japan use 110 watts or 110 volts? Or do they use the same power as Europe, 220 to 240? Please let me know in the comments down there. Of course I could check this out on Google, but then it wouldn't be interactive now, would it? Tune in next week. I'm going to be dumping this stuff onto the PC through my new mini disc recorder. And I'm really looking forward to hearing, and maybe even a little cringing, what my music sounded like 20 plus years ago. Because today it sounds like disco slash synthwave 80s pop music i've done a dub before that reggae before that drum and bass before that disco djing and even hip-hop promotion in the 90s in 1993 i put on my first hip-hop gig i'll tell you all about that in the next video. Alright, thanks for tuning in guys, and girls, and everything in between. As Yoda says, drink coffee you must. John Green on the scene. Stay tuned.